All right, I have another one that we really loved. <laughs> Can you tell we like this all these? This is going to be our favorite, most favorite, favoritest, most loves. It's going to have a very long title of all the ones we really like. Okay. We've been full-time RV on the road for five years now, and all along the way, people ask us all the time, what is your favorite location and what are your favorite campgrounds? And that's a very hard question to answer. But today, we're going to bring you some of those. We have accumulated a list of some of our favorites we found along the years. And it's everything from military parks to state parks, national parks, boondocking. So there is something on this list for everyone. We're bringing these campdowns to you in <laughs> oh, no, no particular yeah, that's order. What I to say. Phil, take it away with the first one. All right. So the very first one is the Gunter Hill Army Corps of Engineer Campground located in Montgomery, Alabama. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it is $26 a night, and most of the sites in there are very large. They can, it can accommodate large rigs. Our first site was 100 feet long. We could have put three rigs yeah. in our site with us. Most of the sites are located around the body of water that the Army Corps of Engineers are normally attached to, surrounded by trees, just beautiful parks. And the sites were all paved as yeah. well, so nice paved sites. How about a pro tip? Mm -hmm. So this pro tip is for anyone who has an America the Beautiful Senior Pass or Access Pass. You can actually get this COE and all COEs for 50% off if you use your code when you check out at recreation.gov. So any campground you find on recreation.gov is 50% off with those passes. If you're not sure what an Army Corps of Engineer campground is, I have a ton of info for you. I will put a blog down below and it walks you through everything about these campgrounds. And I will tell you right now, you do not have to be military to stay no. there. They're open for everyone. The Army Corps of Engineers is who maintains these campgrounds. Correct. They all sit on bodies of water. They are connected to lakes and dams and locks and the Corps of Engineers take care of these. And some of their income and their revenue they get from campgrounds to help with this fund this process so link down below for that <laughs> and i think that's it for this campground yeah i mean it was a mouthful th this park is 26 dollars a night without those passes so 13 bucks a night for full hookups at a beautiful campground you, you can't, can't beat, beat it. it one of the ways that we were able to keep our costs so low the first few years if you've seen our cost video where we broke it all down is by staying at these parks we stayed as cheap as nine dollars a night for <laughs> yeah. partial hookups full hookups and it really does help your budget a little bit so so check out these campgrounds. When you finish watching this video, make sure you go down below and check for the link. We have about 10 or 12 more campgrounds for you that we want to share all across the country. And I'm going to try and keep updating those as we bump into epic, awesome places to camp. I'll add on to those periodically. Um, so make sure you click the link below and you'll find more. Let's move to one of my favorite places in the world now, Creed, Colorado. Yeah. We did some dispersed camping here with some friends of ours and it was uh, amazing. Of course, the price is free and the views were priceless. Yeah, who doesn't like free 99 when you're camping? And we stayed there for about a week. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, the views changed every day. Yeah, it was gorgeous. So if you don't know how to find dispersed camping, of course we have info on that too. I'll put a link down for a blog down below. But if you're looking for dispersed camping in Colorado, Creed is a place to be. There's a lot to do and see there. And I'm telling you, the best time of day is just sitting there on the top of that hill watching the sunset. Next up is Artona South Corps of Engineer Park in LaBelle, Florida. Now this one was really unique. It is located on the intercoastal waterways mm -hmm. in Florida and it's on a lock system. So the, the Army Corps of Engineers, they're in charge of the lock system throughout the interco inner water Intercoastal, intercoastal waterway. waterways. Sorry, <laughs> that's a mouthful. But it's a it's a beautiful site. It's thirty dollars a night, <laughs> and if you have the pass that Stacy was talking about earlier. 15 bucks. Yeah. Can't beat that. Of course, this campground is year round. And yes. I got to say, we were there for Christmas one year with some friends of ours. And it was really so amazing yep. to watch those boats go through the waterway and to see the lock fill and empty. It was a really cool experience. But we got to kind of hang out on the rail at the, at the locks and talk to the mariners that were going through there. And some of the boats and how they had them set up were really, really cool. You've got to check out Ortona South. Next up is Elk Fork, not yeah. Elks. <laughs> Elk Fork National Forest Campground. And it is less than an hour outside the east entrance of Yellowstone. And it's about an hour or so outside of Cody. Mm, yeah. So I really love this campground. It's one of my favorites. I feel like 
you know, it is a National Forest campground, so you are dry camping. All that's there is a vault toilet. It is $10 per night, unless you have those passes I was talking about. You yep. can also use those at National Forest Campground. So it's five bucks a night if you have any one of those. But it's perfectly situated outside the National Park to go visit that, or you can just hang out there. You're nestled, nestled in trees. It's right along a river, so we were able to walk along the river. Yep. And if if you actually go there in the summer, and like us, you could go in the water, you can, you know, tube or hang out and raft or swim or whatever. So it was, I think, a beautiful location. I'm not a fan of being surrounded by big, big, big trees. And they had a lot of them there. But other than that, it was really very, very peaceful. Every day we would go into the park and come back. It was just the, the quiet of the campground that kind of put you at ease. I think Phil doesn't like the trees because it kills his satellite. He can't watch his football, well, that but too. that's a whole different story. That too. <laughs> Next is our first military campground, and this one is Fourth Cliff Recreation Area in Humarock, Massachusetts. I hope I'm saying that right. Humarock? If, if not, oh. Humarock? <laughs> it's either Humarock or Humarock, Massachusetts. So let us know if we said it right down in the comments. But it is a seaside recreation area. It has 11 campsite it Full had more campsites. it had more but the sea reclaimed some of those it took back some of the land and essentially it fell into the sea you've got great sea views you sleep great with the windows open hearing the waves crashing against the beach very nice campground but you do have to be in the military or a veteran that's been vetted through the va to get or to gain access mm -hmm. To the area. This campground is in a great location. It is only 15 minutes away from the train that will take you into Boston and it's only 30 minutes north of Plymouth Rock. So there's a lot to see and there's also so many really cute small coastal towns right outside of the base and you're gonna love exploring all of them. We had a great time there. Yeah and we, I don't know if we mentioned the price but it is $50 a night and it is for hookups. And remember when we were talking about military bases they're always cheaper than the surrounding campgrounds. Right. They're never free. You will be able to count much cheaper than if you were in a regular public campground. Right. And this one's kind of unique. It's not on the base. It's away from the base, but the base is responsible for it, the Air Force Base. So you're not going to find the normal amenities that you would find yeah. on a base. Before we get to the next campground, of course, I'm sure you've noticed our t-shirts. Yep. These are our new t-shirts. We've already gotten a ton of people asking about them. So I thought I would just go ahead before you comment down below. <laughs> you can pick these up in our store. I'll put the link down below in the description. And if you're in our newsletter, it's the only place you'll receive discounts from our store. We just had these shirts at 10% off. So make sure you join our newsletter. We'll send you discount codes for our store as well as any other savings, sales, anything awesome that we find Anything travel or RVing related, yep. we'll share that with you in case you're looking for the same thing. All right, this is one of our very favorite military campgrounds we're going to yeah. talk about. This is on the Air Force Academy. It's called Peregrine. I already yeah. said it wrong. Yeah. Peregrine. <laughs> Peregrine Pines Fam Camp, our family campground. Yeah. We love this place. We've been there more than once already. We would go back a zillion times over yeah. if we could, but this one, as with many of these campgrounds, they do book up pretty quick. Again, this is on a military base. It's on the Air Force Academy. You do, again, have to be eligible to camp on the military base in order to use this campground. The sites are um, sandy and gravelly. There's yeah. 105 sites here. They are uh, full hookup sites, and it is a year-round campground. The price is 30 to 43 bucks a night, depending upon what site you get and what time of year it is. And it's located in my hometown of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So that's another great reason to go and visit. And of course, there's a ton to do in the springs, yeah. around the springs. So it's a great place to explore. And you don't really even have to leave the base to no. explore. The academy has bike trails and hiking trails. And, you know, when you go outside your RV, you're going to be surrounded by mountains and beautiful trees. It's, it's a really cool campground. Next up is Letchworth State Park, located in Castile, New York. This is a unique campground or a unique state park because they have three waterfalls mm -hmm. throughout the park. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous. There are 257 electric only sites and they're only open from May to October. 
Yep, and the sites are gravel sites. It's a regular state park one. But one thing to know about this state park is it was voted the best in the country in 2015. That's, and yeah. I can see why. It is really amazing. Now, if you are into any kind of water, sports, rafting, kayaking, all of that stuff, you can do that there. And a really cool thing about this state park is they also have a ton of things you can do in the winter. The campground isn't open, but if you're in the area, they have snowmobiling and shoe. Oh, yeah. Snowshoeing. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a snow person, but <laughs> they have a ton of stuff you can do there in the winter when it's covered with snow. Yeah, it's. I mean, the, the miles of trails around that state mm -hmm. park or in that state park are un. I mean, they're unreal. And the other good thing is it's only about an hour and a half away from Niagara Falls. Yeah. So it's a good place if you wanted to get away from the city and, and explore that area. You can still make it to Niagara Falls if you haven't been there yeah, either. For a nice day trip, for yeah. sure. All right, this is actually one of my favorites. I probably could say this <laughs> like, like every time. You're saying that on every one of them, <laughs> my absolute favorite. My One of my favorites. I Come love on. this place. Okay, so next up is Lower Lee Vining Campground, and it's in Lee Vining, California. This is a national forest campground, and it has 51 dry camping sites. So there's nothing there, not even potable water. So... It is literally in the Sierras at the base of this mountain, and it is beautiful. Just every morning, the views from the top of the mountain, the sun rises, the sun sets in the evening. You're going to want to go here. I almost don't want to share this on the channel because <laughs> it's already tough to get into this campground. It is first come, first serve, and it yeah. fills up every year. But it is the place to be if you want to be 15 minutes outside the east yeah. entrance to Yosemite. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And again, it was $14 a night, and it was even cheaper if you had, had the pass. the card, yeah. Yeah, if we were talking with that, we talked about. But it is, I mean, it is amazing. We sat there for 24 days. Okay, so let's preface that, because <laughs> yeah. you're only allowed to be at this campground for 14 days. Right, right. But this is the campground where the bear busted into our window our first night there, and we were waiting on parts, so they gave us a pass and yeah. let us stay longer. So, of course, I'll put that video down below, too, so you can check that out, and you'll be able to see the campground we're talking about. Another cool thing about this campground is there's a ton to do in this area, not just in Yosemite, but Lee Vining is really cool. Yep. There's a ton of lakes and a ton of things to visit here as well as Mammoth Lakes Which is a typically a ski town, but it's really cool in the summer, too So that's only 30 minutes away yep. So there's a ton to see and do in this area and it's a beautiful area There was a there was a lake I think it was that was the salt content in the yeah. lake was so high that when birds landed in it the buoyancy was an issue there. Yeah. It was really cool to go see and watch or look at firsthand. All the minerals from the mountains run into this lake and yeah. this lake doesn't have a stream for it to run out of. So it's all collected. And as the water evaporates, the salt stays. So it's really a unique lake. And here's one that you'll thank me for later. If you're, if you're in the mood for some really good food, yeah. <laughs> you got to go to the mobile gas station there in Levi. Don't be scared. No, I mean, it, you've always heard, don't eat the food at the at the gas station. Don't eat garage sushi or gas station <laughs> sushi. Okay, maybe uh, not the sushi. Yeah, I got to tell you, the, the restaurant inside the mobile gas station has a chef in there. And that individual can cook. We tried just about everything on the menu in our 24 days there, and we were not disappointed one time. Yeah, it's really good. So make sure you fill up with gas. You can dump your tanks yeah. there as well, fill up with water, and while you're at it, hop in and get something to eat at the um, counter. Oh, one other thing. Stacy mentioned there's there's nothing in the, the campground. There's no water or anything. Two miles outside of the campground, there is a free water fill station yeah. on your way into the gas station to get your, your grub. It is a part of the National Forest, yes. so they offer that resource. So um, it makes it super easy if you're camping there. Yep. Okay, should I say it? This is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of my favorites as well. And what we're talking about is the, Gap, uh, the Badlands Gap National Grassland in Wall, South Dakota. That's Ooh, right. It's a mouthful. Yeah, this is... Literally dispersed camping, you're on the edge of the cliffs mm. there at the Badlands. There's a family of, I think they're mountain goats. Mountain goats. Family of goats? They're goats. I thought Are they, they go were goats. Billy okay. goats, mountain goats, something. Uh, anyway, we used yeah. to, we watched them every morning. They would, they would come and hang out right on the edge of the cliffs next to the campground. It was amazing. The views from those cliffs 
I mean, are just unlike any we've seen anywhere else. The terrain is so different than yeah. what you're used to. It, it's an awesome site. And I know we've all seen pictures of the Badlands and videos, but it is so different when you're sitting there looking at it for yourself. Now, you are not going to want to go here in the summer. No. It, would, it gets bad. Whew, the heat will... I mean, it was warm enough in the winter when we were there. It was so. in the 90s while we were there yeah. during the day. And then in the evening... It know, was really nice. It was, it was cool, cooler. It is big rig friendly, but I do recommend that you kind of go out and scout the way in and find a spot. We did have big rigs there with us when we were there. And I'm telling you, it's slow and steady wins the race because the views are well worth it. The dispersed camping here is also only about five to 10 minutes from the National Park, Badlands and National Park. Yep. And you're gonna wanna go explore a wall, which is a cool little unique yeah, town. Yeah. And that's only about 20 minutes away too. Yeah. Here's a unique campground that we found, and it is the Clark County Rifle and Pistol Center and RV Park located just outside of Las Vegas. They've got 64 gravel sites right in front of all of the shooting ranges that they have there. They have skeet, skeet ranges literally in front of the race. Yeah. And it was so cool to wake up in the morning and watch them as they did their shooting. I think they had a competition also yep. while we were there. That was really cool. This is one of the county parks that we found. And if you look for county parks or city parks, you're always going to find some really cool places. We've been lucky enough to land a few, and this was definitely one of them. And I know what you're thinking. Sorry. You know, what's the noise like in front of the, you know, or sitting by the shooting range? Inside the rig, we barely heard mm -hmm. it. I mean, it, it was... It was well designed the they were shooting obviously the opposite direction well the skeet shooting is right in front of you but all the other shooting are is not that close to the no. rv no. and they're all tiered so i think some of the way it's tiered it does help block some of the sound but it was really cool so if you want to go to vegas but you're not too keen on being in the middle of everything all the congestion in the urban area this is perfect also, if you're looking for somewhere to stay warm in the winter, this is a great option too. And I think you can do extended stays there. I want to say only up to 30 days, but at 30 bucks a night, it's pretty inexpensive and it's it's a cool place to stay. Now, one of my absolute favorites is Alifaya River State Park in Lithia, Florida. If you're a mountain biker, this is the place you want to be. We rode mountain the, the trails there. We rode them about 15 miles while we were there, and we could have done a whole heck of a lot more if we were in better shape. But <laughs> I got to tell you, very unique campground. You literally walk out of your RV, hop on your bike, and you're on the trails. Really neat. And not only do they have the trails, but they also have a rental company. Yeah. If you don't have bikes, you can rent them right there. This park is nationally acclaimed for its bike trails. And a good thing is it's also on the water. So if you like water sports, oh, yeah. you can also kayak and paddleboard and that kind of stuff. And they, they have like a, a marina mm -hmm. and a, a boat ramp. So all of that is there as well. And the sites were nice size sites. Some of them are actually set up for equestrian sites. Yep. So they're pretty big. They don't have a ton of, of sites. There's only 30. So they do fill up. But they are well worth the stay. And it's only $22 a night to stay there. It's only very inexpensive. We found this campground on the way to Florida one year. It's called Grayton Beach. We kind of snuck in there. They only had <laughs> yeah. a couple spots open and it was really nice. It's kind of, they're all sandy sites. There's 59 partial hookup sites. It is a state park. So it feels like a state park. You're nestled in trees yeah. and most of the sites, there's a little separation with the trees and the bushes. So that was really nice. It was a, had a little privacy, but the campground is literally on the beach. Yeah. You can walk out to the beach and go swimming in the summer you can hear the waves lapping while you're sleeping if your windows are open and it has a sweet well-maintained bike paved bike trail yeah. right outside the campground and it will take you for miles and miles so we would hop on and go to the town uh, i don't know how many like four miles away yeah it was it wasn't a very long ride and we would go explore the town, have breakfast, you know, just hang out. It was, it's a really nice area and you'll enjoy exploring not only the campground and the beach, but all the little towns around. Now, these are just some of our favorites. The <laughs> list is actually a little bit longer, but we were sure you didn't want to sit through all of them. We've been on the road for five years now, so we have found quite a few pretty epic, awesome places to land with the RV. And what we'd like to know from you is what are some of your favorite mm -hmm. places Drop those down in the comments. The more we can share with everybody, the better.